And yeah, so this is our target. This is what we want to do. This is what we want to achieve. Uh, there is an artist, Andreo. It was he created this kind of a bench as an outdoor furniture concept. There are a lot of versions available online now. A lot of different architects follow the same language and have some different variants out of it. And we are trying to like follow a similar approach in our, let's say, urban furniture workshop. Our end target to achieve this kind of a bench in the next half an hour to 45 minutes. There are different random modes that can be seen if you want to just play with the visualization. So uh, if it's a basic thing, we can directly get it out of uh, a big graphy as well. And these are pretty cool views anyways. Perfect. So how can we approach creating this uh, form? Let's create a basic basic let's say outline of a bench where people will be sitting and for that let's take this surface out let's create it there are multiple ways a surface can be created uh, they were already explained in detail in which like some basic uh, forms circle rectangles with chamfering and with rotating around and then combining the region together can get a surface out so we can use that but you are already aware of that methodology. So we are going to use a different one for this one, this, uh, this part. So simple target. I want to just create one, this simple surface, which is like this. For it to be like a functional urban bench, it is necessary that my ground connection is completely flat. It is not up and down so that it can be properly attached and uh, let's say rigidly attached to the base. So if we just go to our whiteboard and see what is happening, let me start sketching. So we want a bench where people are sitting on both the sides, something like this. And if I try to break the geometry, what can happen that this part needs to be a, a flat line, a flat surface, a, a flat curve here to attach to the ground properly. The other thing which I see that there is like kind of a symmetry along this axis. So what essentially we can do is we can start by creating only this part of the bench. Only the one which is highlighted in this pink line. If we have that, we can use the mirroring axis and we get the other half of it. And finally, it is very simple to get this straight line. So what will happen? We will get like these three things. The first, which we created, the second that we mirrored, and the third, which is a straight line. And then if we combine all these three things together, then we have our complete section profile of the bench. Cool. So now we have parametrically reduced our problem. So from a complicated, complete bench to like a small section that we want to achieve. And let's see how we can create it. One methodology already understood with Divya. So our target is to create now a form like this, the blue curve. I can create like a lot of polylines and then I can chamfer them, but I want a bit more curvy things. So what I'm, I'm thinking to use is to have like multiple points around and then somehow creating like a, a spline out of them, uh, like a curve out of them. So what could be the, we already understood from our first problem about right lighting fixtures that we need anchor points around if, uh, in order to control what the uh, combined thing look like. So how many points we are going to need? Definitely the starting point, the ending point. I will need a point here. I will need a point here. But if we just use these four points, my form will be something like this. It won't be like a controlled form. It will be like this pink thing. And all the points are covered, but not properly, uh, not giving us these straight sections, which could be 
like this. I need like a pretty straight section here, yellow, and another straight section here. So what we can do, if we can just add one control point here and another control point here with these six three points, six points, I am pretty sure that we are will be able to get this kind of a form. Let's try and test and then see if it happens or not. Great. So let's say I want my mirror axis. I want to mirror along this axis. And I want this to be the, let's say, the our normal y axis, which is 0, 0, 0. So I have to have this point, let's say, in the negative direction. We want the total bench thickness, let's say, on the ground to be 40 centimeters. So this could be like 20 centimeters away. Now, following the normal uh, convention of the bench, the, the height where people sit is around 45 centimeter, 40 centimeter, and the backrest is another 40 centimeter. So we can have the total height of the bench to be something around 80 centimeters. So this is just like a normal parametrization of the problem uh, that you do before jumping into the software to execute it. So I have like a pretty basic idea of the dimensions, what I'm trying to achieve. So based on these basic numbers, I can start creating these anchor points. Again, uh, it is not a, the only way to do it. We have multiple ways. This is just another methodology. So you are aware with uh, what all are the possibilities where we can achieve something. Starting from a blank canvas, I have a new model. And let's say we design an urban furniture. We get our canvas, blank canvas. I want to see my grid. I want to see the axis and in a normal basic view. So let me create this point, the first pretty uh, standard, no problem at all. I just want it to be moved 20 centimeter towards the left side, which is minus Z. So I can start by creating a point, construct point. Right now it is at 0, 0, 0. But as we just saw, we want the zero axis to be our, let's say, mirroring axis. So in the X, I'm just going to type, let's say, minus 20. We are working in centimeters right now. So it's like a 20 centimeter. So when it gets mirrored, my base is like 40 centimeter wide. Perfect. I am done with the first point. And now let's do the extreme point on the top, which is we know that it is just vertically stacked up at 80 centimeter high. Again. A construct point. And they have already explained wonderfully to you that none of these numbers needs to be a uh, number input. If you want any of these parameters to be changeable by your client, or if you want to share it, you can just put a range input. And then in the configurator mode, these things can be changed and altered. So what I have in my center other extreme point. The x, y remains at the 0. It's just the z at z point, which is at uh, 80 centimeters height. So I am just going to make the z as 80. So plus 80 height. OK, I have the two points. And now we just have to create the middle points around. Let's create this point here, the one which is here, which is the extreme point where a person is sitting. What is the width we want to uh, to give? We are saying it is 20 centimeters, so we can give it like 35 centimeter or 40 centimeter because it is moving out. And in terms of height, uh, we already know that this height we want to be at 45 centimeter where the people are sit sitting usually. So let's create this point. So my height where people are sitting is at 45 centimeter. And then the 
place each person is getting to sit is 45 is like let's say 50 centimeter but it is going in the opposite direction we want it to be on the same side so i have to put a minus in front of it perfect so i have like this basic output outline this is my seat this point this point and this point now we just have to put some anchor points so that i get like a a proper uh, boundary for my seat let's put uh, the point behind where they are sitting it looks a bit high to me maybe i get it a bit down 35 yeah looking better now perfect i construct another point so it's just based on your method, what you feel is parametrically the right approach. For some people, doing multiple points, creating a section may not be the ideal approach, but it's good if you always have like a, a plan B if something doesn't work out. So this is the point. It is slightly higher than this one and slightly left here. What is the width of the, the like the back panel? And let us have it as slightly higher earlier it was 35 so let me do it as 45 and slightly on the left side so let's say minus eight yeah or minus 10 too much minus eight is good perfect so these were our four basic anchor points if i just draw this one what all anchor points we have achieved till now is this one this one this one and this one this one two three four let's just put these four points in uh, in in the order and then see how our curve looks like so create like a spline or a curve let us go to the tools in the primitive curve formation let's see if we find anything uh spline we have interpolate so i have it again to get all the data in i need to merge them together i create like a merge list let's put all of them together the four points remember whenever we are doing this kind of functions and operations the order of input is very important so always go from bottom to top in the order or uh, in the reverse one but okay similar to what we expected that i wanted like a a, a straight back here but this is for the approach with four points is uh doing fine it is creating a spine in which all the points are covered but i'm not getting a straight section here and here so what we can do, we can just add one point here and one point here, and hopefully things should work better. So let us construct another point. So what I want, I want it to be slightly higher than this point. So if uh, at this location, so if this point was at 80, uh, let us do 77 or 78 and slightly on the left side. So this one was minus eight. So I can do it as minus five. So I added this one additional anchor point. Remember that I haven't yet added it to the merge list and the spline formation. So it is just a point yet. It is not uh, causing any effect on the red line that we have. Let's create another point here. I let's get it exactly down the same. So minus 50 remains minus 50. And the height for this point was 35. It should be slightly lower than this. So let us do 30 or 25. Sounds good. Now let's try to put all of these points together. Again, these points are somewhere in between. So 
we have to make sure to add all of the points in the correct order. So I have to start again from the beginning. The first point goes here. Uh, Ayush, maybe it will make it easier if you add ports on the list merge. Yeah. Yeah. But OK, maybe in our next step. Cool. I have an interpolated curve. Let's hide all of them and then see what it looks like. I have like quite a nice chair outline similar to what I was looking for. We can maybe play around a bit. Let's have this point slightly lower, which is this point. Yeah. It is at 35. How about we do 33? Yes, looking better. Cool. So I have like half a profile now. If I just go to this one, this was the most complicated part. So we wanted to create an entire section. And then we figured out that just by creating one thing and adding a straight line and mirroring it will do the job. So we have a curve already. Let's create a, a mirror out of it. I get the geometry. And by default, it is set to the correct axis. Otherwise, we can just change the, we can provide the correct plane input if we want to change it along a different axis. So to create the entire section, the only thing missing now is this straight line. How can I draw this straight line? Uh, we already know that this is minus 20 here, x. So once I mirror it, the x point here will be plus 20. So we can create like a line from two points directly. I can add the two points here, x, x as minus 20, and here as plus 20. But I do not want any thing in the y, so I put it as 0. And I think it does the job. So these three things combined gives our bench section what we were expecting to achieve. Let us just join them together. First, second, and third. Let us hide everything else. And now we have one curve which defines the section where people are sitting. Let us see how it looks as a surface. We just have a boundary. So we use the command surface curve to surface. And then we see the surface is looking nice as well. So let's say we want to achieve this entire form. We have achieved our basic starting point. Cool. Now let's repeat all of the thing. So our approach, we created one thing. We create this array, this series of different elements. And then in the final step, we will try to manage the variation, how it is happening inside the, on, on, on the table on the whole bench. So if I see this form, it is a curvy linear form. So which kind of array we should use? A polar array. If it is a linear, a straight line, we could have gone linear, but we have an array in front of us. So let us hide this surface and let's just keep working on this spring around. We need a polar array. The geometry is this one. Right now, what is happening that it is uh, the array is happening with this as the center point, the origin 0, 0, 0. Uh, we do not want it because then it is like rotating the same surface, uh, the surface at its center itself. We want to put the point out somewhere here or here so that it gets rotated along that thing. So let us. Uh, we can create a point or we can directly 
change the point look here. How about if we take it like 150 outside, we can increase the number of our elements. Let's add it to 100. We do not want it like a complete circular bench. We just have like a portion of the entire circle. So I am not aware with radian wonderfully. So we use the degree to radian command. which should come somewhere. Reloading will help. Here it is, our degree to radian. Let us have a range input as a 90 degree thing. And I apply here as a radian. OK, looks good now. I have a. A nice distribution. Let us increase the, the allowable angle a bit to 180 degree. And then let's increase it. Yeah, looks good. This distribution as a bench looks pretty nice. But it is like still a very small cramped curve here. Like people sitting uh, on this side will touch each other. So maybe let's just increase the radius slightly. From in the point, center point from 150 to let's say 250. Much better. I have a much larger, wide, spread out skeleton of a bench. And it is, there is nothing much parametric about it. It is like a very simple, extruded, lofted, sweet thing. But yeah, it's a good starting point. Now, what we want to do. We want to achieve, let's say, if I show you, we have Let's say all of these are our individual frames, which you'll see here. These all are our individual frames. They are, all are very boring at the moment because they all are of the same size, the same height. What we can do is we can scale them. We can scale them in a way that sum is getting higher some is getting lower, some is getting very lower, and so on, so that we can create like this kind of a dynamism and a curvy linear form out of it, which is actually in the uh, in our reference example that we get some kind of a uh, like a variety and dynamism in the overall form. And how we can do it? It's pretty simple. I just need to scale each of my individual element. So for example, in this polar array, we have 100 frames. We can decrease it. We can make it 90, 80, whatever the number we like. So I have 90 frames. And I can just scale all of these frames in a particular pattern. So let's say this frame is getting scaled at 0 0.5. Something is getting 0 0.6. If something is getting higher than our normal height, it could be scaled at 1.1, 1.2, and so on. Doing it manually is possible, but it is definitely not parametric and a smart way to do it. So uh, we will use something to achieve it. Let's let's see what can be done. Uh, we want to scale it, so let's use the scale component. I have the geometries to scale. Perfect, but something wrong is happening. All of them are getting centered at the same point. I want, what we want is all of the geometries to be scaled separately. We want that this frame here should be scaled based on the bottom point it is connected to the ground. Let's say this frame here should be scaled based on this point. This frame here the other one should be framed at the bottom point of it. So let's try to find these bottom points for each of them. 
and how we can do it we can use a simple command known as evaluate curve which gives us the point on the curve so if i do this what we get we get a if i let's just hide this thing we get a point somewhere here let's change this parameter where we want the point to be and if i change it to one yes now i have 90 points related to each of the frame so each frame is getting their individual scaling point so we have got we have gotten our points perfect so let's put it in the center and if i switch it on it is now working as expected that all of the of all of the uh, different frames are getting scaled based on their individual base point but if we simply scale all of them to the same factor there is no play happening we want this kind of a of a play on um, in which there is like a, a unique scale factor following the rhythm or a pattern and then there is a, a wonderful component it's part of grasshopper as well it is known as a graph mapper so what it does is we provide an input in the form of x uh, as between the range 0 to 1 and it provides an output in the form of like 0 to 1 again so which there are multiple kinds of graphs possible let us just use anything let's use a bezier curve and then let's see what happens we are just creating a graph out of it like what what kind of a pattern we want in our bench but there is no input in it yet how many scaling points we want equal to the number of frames we have so to count the number of scaling points which is necessary I, we can use list length to identify how many points are there so let me count how many points are here let's say if i add a panel here we see that okay we have a total of 90 objects so this is just again parameterization if we, let's say we change we our uh, bench has 84 frames instead of 90 we automatically get that input that okay we have 89 division points to take care so we now know how many scaling factors we want how can we create a scaling factor so we can use like a normal series which is known as list sequence so in which we start creating like a sequence like an order so like a normal arithmetic progression one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one ten twenty thirty whatever it is so we know that our input range is zero to one so how many so i have to start from zero to match with the x x x input range zero how many of these points we want how many scale factors we want equal to the number of frames which we already know by measuring the list length so we provide that input and how is the step how much each uh, point is progressing uh, we want that we want the max we know that the x range input is 0 to 1 so the highest point could be 1 so how about if we just divide the stuff the count by one so it just like gives us uh, the parameter by which each of the each of the numbers should be increased in order to achieve the total as one so let's say now it is giving us a list let us see in a panel how this list looks like what we said I want the number to start from zero. The total count should be 84, which is the length which we entered here. And the maximum number should be the one. Let's say if it is happening or not. It is starting from zero, correct, checked. The length of the list is 84, zero plus 83. First, we start from zero, so 83, perfect. And the maximum we are getting is up to 0 0.988, which is less than one, perfect. So all of the three conditions that we wanted, for input in our graph, uh, graph mapper is being satisfied. So now simply add our list and we get an output. 
So ideally, we should get like scale factors following this kind of a curve. Let's now, we already started scaling it, but it was all at a constant factor right now. Let's add this Y here in the scale factor and then see what happens. Something happened, we cannot see. So let us switch off the visualization of everything except the final result. Perfect, looks pretty cool. We have a, a scaling system which is following this kind of a curve. Now we can do one thing, we can try multiple kind of curves in the graph mapper. Uh, let's say what happens if it is a sine curve. Great. So it is following the curve, exactly what we wanted to achieve. If I just move the curve around, I see different things coming here. Wonderful. So this is working pretty well. One thing which I don't like is this scale factor, the portion in the middle of the bench is getting super small. So nobody can sit it on it. It is dysfunctional. So if you want it to be just like an artistic piece, we can you can go with something like this. But for me, it is like a functional piece. I want uh, it to be slightly bigger. So what we can do, we can use remapping of the numbers. So what the remapping does is it takes a series of the number and then extrapolate them into a certain range by keeping the same character. So if the character is like this kind of a sine curve, the same character will be retained, just the range in which that character is happening will be shifted, will be changed. And we, we will see what is exactly happening. For example, uh, I already started with a base curve, which is like a standard seat. So I do not want to go very small. I want the, let's say, the smallest portion to be only like reduced by 30% or 40%. So the smallest should be like 0 0.6 scaling factor. And biggest, I can just make it slightly bigger than what I already have. So maybe 20% bigger. So the biggest scaling factor could be 1.2. And we have to provide that. Again, what is the target? I want the minimum scaling factor to be 0 0.6, the maximum scaling factor to be 0 0.2. This is what I want. What are the numbers I want to remap? These are the numbers which I'm getting after this character is being applied. And now it is asking us to give the source minimum and the source maximum. What is the minimum number out of this by output and the maximum number? And here we can use a component known as bounds, which is meant exactly to do the same thing, which gives us the bound. What is the range in which this series is happening? I provide the list. I add minimum to the source minimum. I add maximum to the source maximum. Now I get Let us me apply a panel and see what kind of output we get after remapping the numbers. We have the length of the series as 84, which is a good sign. It is exactly how many curves we have. And then I see that some of them are 1.2, 1.8, 1, and going down to 0 0.6, 0 0.6 here, and then it starts going back up again. Perfect. So the scaling factor are now more rationalized scaling factors. What happens if I apply here? Much better. So I have the form happening, and then the minimum and the maximum thing is already so taking place. Let us see what happens if we just change the sine curve. Here, some position. Yes, functioning well. Now let's apply different kinds of form. Yes, it is. I, I like it the Gaussian distribution. Let us increase the intensity even further. And let's change the distribution slightly. Perfect. So just you see that there is one parameter about this graph mapper and your entire furniture system can be changed. I, I like this thing pretty much for now. So let's start. Let's, let's move ahead on what can be done next. I got them. Let us, we want it to be made out of plywood or MDF or acrylic sheet or anything. So they need to get a thickness. So 
So how we can do that is we can convert these curves into surface. So let's do curve to surface. Great, I have received all the surfaces. And now we need to provide thickness to all of them. And how can we provide thickness? Our go-to, all-time favorite, easiest tool, extrude. We need to extrude points, no, curve, no. We need to extrude surface. I provide this surface. And now the default extrusion is happening along the Y, the Z axis. But is it correct? Not for my case. I want to give uh, thickness to each one of them. And how can we do that? The thing is, a normal Y axis thickness will not be good as well. Uh, let me explain you why. Because we have applied a polar array, some of our panels are like this, some are like this, some are like this, some are like this. And finally, let's say some is like this. If we apply extrusion along the y-axis, let's say this is the y-axis shown by this red arrow. For this element, it will be OK. It will be extruded here. It will be extruded here. For this element, it will be extruded like this. So rather than getting like a perfect block, I will get, and if when it gets but like perfectly vertical, we will get like a surface which is just aligned on itself. So this is not the right thing to do. We need to create a, we need to create find a direction where each of the panel is looking, where each of the surface is located, and then extrude along that direction. So we need to have like a separate vector for each of the surface. So because we have this huge thing, this one will be looking perfectly up. This one looking will be here. That will be the ideal direction to extrude it. Uh, do we have a command for it? Yes, it is known as face normals. Which just gives which just which just gives the direction of the normal along the face. So I have a face, and what is something perpendicular to it, the vector. If we get apply the face to it, we get the normals out of them, which should, which are actually the vectors at the center point, the points you can see here. If I apply the vectors to this vector, let's see what happens. All of them get extruded well, yes, but the thickness is very, very less. We cannot, we can't even see the extrusion thickness. And the sad part is that they are getting extruded multiple times. It is because this output is grafted, it, it is getting into multiple trees. So each surface is getting extruded all of the times. So what we can do is we can simply flatten it and then if I apply here, then it should be only one uh, extrusion per surface based on the normal direction individually that we calculated using the face normal component. Looks pretty good now. You see that there is slight thickness, but it is not enough. I want to control this thickness. I want to identify how much thick my plywood is, how much thick my board is. So what we can do is we can put a component known as amplitude or create ve vector with amplitude. Amplitude is the amplitude is the is the weight, is the length and Vector is the direction. So I get the direction from the face normal, and then I supply the, the length. So vector goes here, and length can be applied by a range, let's say two centimeters thick. And 
and let us see whether it is working with three centimeter and then we can reduce it down later. I created this new vector and let's just apply it. Seems to be working. Yes, now we can see the thickness. All of them are working and it's in the correct direction. So this face normal component was pretty useful. So we can identify the direction for each of the individual faces. Looks good, but it's pretty thick for me. So let us do with go with two. Looks much better now. A two centimeter thick board. Yes, wonderful. Okay, so we have now received complete horizontal elements. But if we just go to our reference, we have some of these horizontal elements as well to hold everything together. Uh, we are towards the end of the workshop, so maybe just five more minutes and we have everything. Again, uh, we are trying to use uh, a Boolean operation with solid interaction, uh, intersection and then see whether we are getting through there or not. But otherwise, you already know all the concepts and it is pretty easy to do it. So if I want to do an intersection, we need two uh, solids. So first one that we want the elements to remain just inside our bench boundary. So we can use our surfaces, which is this. So we have all the surfaces. I can create a solid out of it. So we can use like loft solid. And if I put all the surfaces here, let's see what happens. I get a solid out of it. Let me just switch off the visualization of everything else so we can concentrate in this final part. Wonderful. We have the solid bench outline. And now we just have to create these, uh, these horizontal ports, which we can intersect with this. Again, we can use uh, like a normal rectangle. And then we can extrude it. So rectangle is this. First point could be, we just have to make sure the rectangle covers it uh, fully. So it could, the bigger it is, there is no problem, but it just needs to be uh, big enough to cover everything. So this becomes our first point. And second point, let's do 400 or 500 is better. And then y-axis becomes, in this direction, again, minus 500. Yeah, perfect. So I have this rectangle which covers everything. And then make it into a surface. And then we have to move it up. So we have to move it up in a, like we have to have multiple of these surfaces. As you see here, we have it at like a sequential uh, height everywhere. So we can create a, again, a series, which is a sequence at how many, like what all height we want to keep it on to, uh, to move it up. We want to move it in the Z direction. So move this in the Z. I just need to provide input from the series, how many we have. So let's say we can have a 10. I want five centimeter from the ground and let's say each of them is 12 centimeter or 15 centimeter away from one another. If I do this input here, I see the surfaces happening. Perfect. But these are all surfaces at the moment. They are not solid. So again, our all-time favorite component, extrude surface. We extrude it. Which direction we want it to extrude it to? To Z. How much thickness we want our plywood to be? Not 10 centimeter to thick. We use two centimeter there, so we can again use two centimeter here. Perfect. And now we want to do a solid intersection. 
let's see if it works this time or not. Otherwise, we are already uh, there. Tools, booleans, solid intersection. Yes. I apply this here. And now we have like one component and multiple other inputs. So let's see what happens if we graft it and then apply here. Let's just give it one second and then see uh, what, where what we have achieved till now. We have already gotten all the uh, vertical elements, which are working extremely fine. All the vertical things following our wave idea happening completely OK. And now we are just trying to get this vertical elements integrated somehow. You cannot see it. This is what I was doing. So vertical elements in the wavy format in the blue done. And we just want this pink elements to happen. Let's see if something happened. No, I applied a wrong solid into the intersection. So, and let's hide and then see what happens. It's perfect. This is exactly what we imagined to happen. And it happened as well that we have these horizontal planes as well. Now, if I switch on the visualization of our vertical elements, and now we see like a very nice urban table font. But it is still very simple for me. I want to play with the graphs a bit. So we know that uh, by now today that the Boolean operation is pretty uh, time consuming. So what I will do, I will disable this component till the time I'm playing with it. And as soon as I'm satisfied, I will just activate this component. I like this to be like much more happening, even much more dynamic. It is already pretty good. But let's say the sync graph, which is a very uh, blink graph, a lot of things happening. And yeah, this is what I imagined something. And now we can play around with this graph and then move it around left and right and do it till we are satisfied with the form. It is processing everything out. And yeah, this is the kind of urban bench which I'm pretty okay. It's just very long for me. I want to reduce the length of it. So it's 123 degree. I will make it, let's say, 105 degrees. And then let's see what happens. It should ideally just get a bit shorter here. The rest of the thing should be the same. I should have stopped the solver and then have provided the input, but uh, it's okay. I can do it now. But now let us going back to our drawing board and summarizing everything what we did pretty quickly because it was a good exercise. We first created our section of the table which was pretty, uh, let's say, straightforward. There are multiple ways to do it. Then we created our polar array in which all of the series were copied together. Pretty straightforward. Then final thing was that we used like a Bezier curve to create a, a scale factor for each of them. So there is a as the different scale factor applied to all of them. Finally, we 
used surface normals to provide thickness to each of the individual panels correctly. So all our verticality was done. Then we used to provide our horizontal elements, and then we combined them together. The final step is we will apply material to them, and we are done with the exercise. Okay, I'm satisfied with how it looks. It's not very long. It's at 105 degree. And I'm okay with how this bump is coming here as well. I can enable our solid uh, intersection, which gives us our horizontal line. And I will start the solver. Then we are pretty much done with the form finding thing. We just need to apply the material to make it look nicer. But uh, all our technical stuff is already done. Pretty quick this time, and it looks good. Let's add now final touch, a material, apply material. On what elements we want to apply our materials to? Our horizontal components. Let's flatten all of them before we input there. These elements as well as our vertical extruded. You can provide different materials to them as well. You can just, uh, we can just take two of the material components and then we can apply separate colors as well. Material, we need to apply, give a color. I need like a wooden brownish tone. Looks good. I can switch off the visualization of everything apart from the last material component. And if I go to a rendered mode, looks pretty good. So here we are. I can turn off the view of the grid behind. I do not want to see access. I want a pretty high quality. This is the final view we are getting. And then let's see how it's looking. It's nice to have these kind of furniture in our urban spaces. They will make them much more lively. And the good part is everything is parametric. So if you designed one, just based on the site constraint, you can change a few slider here and there, and you get like a completely different form out. The most interesting thing to notice here is that just by changing one parameter in the graph here, the entire identity and the view is getting changed. And this is the default graph. You can change, you can have a, like your own input uh, graph as well, pretty completely customized graph to have a different pattern uh, as an output. So that was it. This was our, our final third session of the day. Good to see that you are still there, a lot of you. So any questions, any doubts, please go ahead. Thanks, Ayush. Uh, there was, ah, yeah, there, there was a comment from Lars. When you were using list sequence, Mm -hmm. uh, and then you use this division thing. Mm -hmm. you, you know we have list sequence SEC? Like, I am not aware of that. Like in Grasshopper, you have range and series? Yeah. So in Bigraphy, one is list sequence, the other one is list sequence SEC, where SEC stands for start and count. OK. So OK, you... so that is perfect. So we could, have, we could have used that element directly, in which we just say, how many count I need, I would have put in, kept the end as one. So it's already give the input as. Mm -hmm. One more comment. I, I don't know whether you intentionally okay. omitted or maybe you didn't know that uh, it's possible in the graphy. But after the graph mapper, you used a pre map. Pre -map. You could also change the uh, y. The, range. the y. Yeah. Uh, it was from zero to one, but you yes, can but it was intentionally done to introduce the element of remapping. Okay, 
I guess I didn't want to intervene. I guess that's the reason. Uh, what? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, one more thing. Uh, th this is like a <laughs> hidden feature until we improve it. But in the apply material, users mm -hmm. actually apply texture. Mm -hmm. uh, and the only texture I, I know by heart is plywood. <laughs> oh. the, the rest are like difficult. So you, you can use plywood uh, as a text input. Yeah. That it would apply plywood texture. But the color looked good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That it's like it highlights the form that we are achieving. So mm -hmm. perfect. <laughs>